I didn't know anything about making films, and I learned by just making surf films. My name is Taylor Steele, and I've been a filmmaker for over 30 years. We're in North County, California, filming a master class on surf filmmaking. The class will cover all the different elements that it takes to make a surf film, from pre-production to filming to editing to marketing on the back end. I'd love viewers to take away from this class that it's possible for them to make surf films. You know, if they have a great idea, it's possible for them to do it. I started making surf films soon after I started surfing at like 10, 11 years old. Mm. My parents bought a video camera. I, I stole it and used it to shoot me and my friends down on the beach. MTV just came out and music videos were very popular during that time and it was all about like fast editing to music. I did that for a while and then for me, I sort of got bored during that side of it. And that inspired me to go down a route of showing the world in a beautiful way. Showing it in a romantic way that inspired travel. Films that where I chased a swell or, or films that were based on conversations and, and just really sort of approached it with what, what was inspiring and what was sort of a fresh idea to the market. Probably the biggest point of difference with making surf films than you know any other documentary is one, you need to be a coach to the surfers. Two, you need to know the ocean, read the conditions, know the swells. The other element is like, now you're also a documentary filmmaker and making a documentary. So you need to tell stories and you need to think about like how to make this interesting for the viewer. For me, um, it starts with the idea. It's good to have confidence that your, your history, your experiences is a perspective that's worth hearing. Sometimes it's overwhelming to want to try to make a surf film. You think that you need to be working with the top surfers at the time in the best locations. And it's not necessarily the case. It's really thinking about what story you can make with what's around you. This time tomorrow, I follow a swell from Tahiti all the way to Alaska in eight days and surf the same waves four times. How do I make something different? I don't have a big budget. I only want to shoot for eight days. Chase as well. That sort of idea was a, an idea just to get creative and do something different. Make something that you're interested in and, and really like tell a story that resonates with you and then just go from there. Like make it so that you're interested in it and, and follow that journey. Surf films could be made for, you know, under a thousand dollars or they could be made, you know, there's some being made today over a million dollars. That surf film is what I really want to make. That's the one I want on the th in the theaters and, and on the screen for people to experience. But during that, filming that, I could be also filming short pieces that could be on YouTube that could be maybe sponsored. Lock in your big idea and then start working backwards on like pieces that could be sort of like carved out to be part of a sponsorship package or revenue from, you know, different sort of stock footage sold. There's a lot of ways to approach how to find revenue to sort of support it. You, you learn that it, it, you're part of the story, you're, you're the reason that it's happening, you're driving the whole thing from motivating the surfers to getting sponsors. And you can't sort of pass that on to anybody else. If you wanna get it made, you gotta figure out how to, how to get it made. In the past, I wouldn't do a shot list and I wouldn't create um, a mood board. And I would show up on location and I would start capturing whatever I saw in front of me and, and I would miss a whole bunch of different angles and, and different elements that um, I needed. And you don't really think about, you know, creating a shot list when you're working with natural elements, but it, it is important to do if you can. The kind of shots of the location you wanna get, doing a little like storyboard on that. I try to take it to a basic level of like, think of it as a photo and what would look best in that photo and then build out this sort of look and feel from there. You know, the key roles you need for a surf film, cinematographer, an editor, producer, audio, but most likely it's gonna be just you doing all those roles until you get more established. I, I did all of them for the first eight years of my career and now I don't think I do any of them but just direct, 
I'm fortunate where when we're on shoots, we have drones in the air, red cameras, nice lenses on them. And then we have a guy in the water with, you know, phantom cameras shooting at super high frame rate. And then on the beach, we'll have two angles to cover all the action. Having those four angles is, is crucial, you know, if it's like a one day swell with the top surfers. You can make a whole section from that one day. But that luxury is not something that everybody has. One of the best filmmakers out there, his name's Jack McCoy, he's legendary. He would get one good shot and then move to another spot and set up and shoot again. Don't get stuck in your one spot and think you have to get all the ways from that angle. So the more you move, it'll look like you have like 20 cameras shooting the angles. I think a big part of pre-production is having conversations with the surfers. You know, when I go through my checklist, it's what locations we're going to be going to, how, how would they surf at those locations, what's their style look like, especially their, how their style looks in slow-mo. A lot of times I'm shooting at a higher frame rate. Usually with, with surfers, you're communicating before they surf and you're talking about what would be dynamic out there or just like what their thoughts are. You know, if you could get a gauge of what kind of surfing they're doing, then it sort of helps you set up different angles as well. You know, for example, backside surfing looks great from the front. Cutbacks look great from the side. Barrels look great from the side. There's different ways to approach each turn or, or maneuver. So you gotta premeditate what they're gonna be doing on the waves. You know, a director's job is to really be aware of what you're, what you're doing and sort of guiding them and just communicating that side of it. I think of like a director of surf films like a coach. What, what's the best way to motivate each, each athlete on there and get them to get the best performance from their, their conditions that you're dealing with? Put the surfers in the best light. Show them in the best possible way. As far as setting up, when it's small, I like to go tighter. It looks better, it sort of like cheats the wave size. Don't be afraid to get real low angles and get like on the ground and use like foreground. Go back up on the hill, these rocks. And I like to be set up before he's in the water so you get everything. You get him walking down the beach, bright red board, small. <laughs> and that's what he looks like. <laughs> You need to like constantly be tracking where that surfer is. You'll hit record, a wave will come. When they take off and ride the wave, I'll be filming them, but I'll also sort of like look out the back as I'm tracking them to make sure there's not a better wave behind it with another surfer that we brought. You miss one wave, you know, I missed a wave 30 years ago and I still get given a hard time about it. I, I missed a wave of Kelly and what he said back then, and this is in like 93, he's like, you used to be better. And so <laughs> he'll, he'll say those sort of little jabs every now and then, and referring back to that original wave, which wasn't that good, but it was good, but um, he's got better. You know, they're under pressure to achieve greatness. They want to know that you have their back and that you captured it. You could get in the water and capture that angle. You're, you get the perspective of being out there with them. The subtleties of the rolling wave past or just uh, a flare going through a wave, all those things make it feel like you're out there. Water's a great way, boat. You know, the closer you can get to the action, the, the more intimate it gets. I'm not stuck on having the newest equipment to succeed. I think it's all about like getting the best equipment you can and then telling a story and, and getting creative with what you have. You know, for me, like my favorite lens was a used lens. I didn't need the brand new lens for it to be better quality. Overall, I think like the way that we need new stuff is, is, is not even environmentally the best way to approach things. We should be using things longer, fixing things, making things work. When you're done with it, you know, letting someone else use it, you know, using stuff that, that has already been making films. Maybe there's some good energy with those cameras. They made something cool before. When filming surfing, um, the gear that I find most important is in the lens side of things. A lot of the brakes are way out at sea, so you might need it just to get close enough to capture it. Or I like to have a bigger lens, even if it's 
all the actions close so that I could have different angles. I could move down the beach and shoot from different points of view. I like to use lenses that have a certain tone. There's a coating on those older lenses that give it more of a film look, but everybody has their own preferences on that side of things, and I think that's what's fun about it. You know, I think the frame rate that you choose is important to exist with what tone you want people to feel. Fast energy with the music, then, then 24 frames a second is perfect. If it's uh, a, a melodic song, then maybe 48 frames or, you know, even slower. It just slows it down and, and captures these subtleties. Lighting is hugely important in surf filmmaking. You can give a lot of feeling with, with what time of day you shoot. If you are shooting first light, it's got this sort of like golden look to it. Midday sun, very saturated, you know, and vivid. It all depends on what story you're telling and being conscious of what, what feeling you're capturing. Throughout history, surfing's been, you know, man versus nature. And I approach it differently. I approach it where it's a dance. You know, the surfer's responding to the wave leading the act. For the most part, with surf films, you're selling the dream. You're selling the, the fantasy of what it's like to be a surfer. Whether it's surfing with your friends or surfing these big waves or surfing this remote location. You want to bring the viewer along on the journey. Shooting the environment and setting the scene is super important. If you got the swell and the swells dropped down and you got much better surfing footage, you need to get some other elements, uh, whether it's B-roll or lifestyle stuff or interviews, to fill out that story. So make sure you get that in there too and don't just shoot surfing. The way I approach it is like I, I want to build the anticipation for that scene. Show them waxing a board show the waves being perfect, and then let the viewer for a pause or a moment just sort of imagine what that surfer is going to be doing in those waves. I like to shoot the wave in a way that captures it by itself. Imagine that, that wave going for decades, unridden, and these guys are the first guys to ride it. Next, start showing the surfer, his excitement, his feelings conversations between the surfers. Try to capture the feeling of him running out or her running out for the first time and surfing those waves and really get that feeling that what it's like to be a surfer in those moments. When I'm shooting B-roll, I like to shoot it in a way that feels like a memory. When you're when you're not moving super fast and you're, you're just sort of relaxed state and you look around and you see maybe a flower blowing in the wind or uh, a sarong sort of like fluttering, dappled light through a tree. Those sort of things are really what will transport the viewer into that same emotional state that, that you were in at the time. I, I try to approach it with um, a lens that's maybe a 50 millimeter um, because it's, it's closest to the, the eye perspective. And so then it gives you a feeling of like you're experiencing it. There's a very delicate balance with exposing a new spot and then what that effects have on that location after you leave. I'm very, very protective of not exposing spots. You know, you build trust in each spot you go to and if there's locals that are previously there, it's important to think of them as well. I will cheat locations and show different backdrops, different, different spots of travel and put it to that location. Um, one time I was filming a spot in Hawaii and then shot Baja as a, as a hangout spot where they're camping. You don't need to show um, a map to these places to validate that you're in a far off land. You could, you could show the far off land part and then get creative on how to sort of keep that spot secret. You set out with a storyboard and ideas, and then you film it, and then you, you think you have one story, and then when you get in the edit room, it's a completely different thing. I'll have an idea, I'll shoot it, and I'll get in the edit room and be like, oh, it doesn't work. The edit room to me is where I let it sort of really find its way. It, it's really good to edit yourself so you see what shots you didn't capture. So the more you do that, the more it helps you 
um, become a better cinematographer. For me, it's it's a lot of letting people breathe during the movie, letting letting moments sort of like stop, and those resets are are probably the funnest part to edit with because you could use like a scene from previous to connect it to the next one, whether it's a color or it's a camera move. You know, there's lots of little tricks that you could do to sort of like make it a little bit more dynamic than just basic shots. Music for me is the emotion, what you want the viewer to feel. You know, in the past I used punk rock music and I wanted people to get motivated to go in the water and surf and try to emulate some of these moves. Later it was the tone of the location the feeling of that trip and what that memory of that trip would, would sound like. I usually like to get a soundtrack going early, start placing the song down and like start going through the clips with that song on repeat. So I could just sort of feel what connects with that song and pops off the, the screen. I'm all for the more feedback, the better. It's good to edit it and show it to people because once you show your film to somebody, you see it in different eyes. You'll see those flaws. You'll see where the edit's going on too long. You need to trust your gut and what you're set out to do and really uh, own that. But don't get so stuck in your ways that you're not taking in feedback and at least considering it. It's, it's taking out ego and really going what's best for the film. When you make a film, you want people to see it and you got to get it out there. Basically, media today is a little bit disposable in the way people approach it. And so the more that you could get undivided attention and have people watching it in a theater is a great opportunity. So that's where submitting to a film festival um, or premiere it yourself, or, or maybe there's a certain movie coming to town and you have a short film and you can show it before their film. I think there's a lot of creative ways to get your film seen in that setting, and that setting is is where the magic happens, people remember it. I'll create scenarios that allow it to be a different version for a different setting. For example, Proximity, we had an art gallery showing a conversation with all the athletes and we showed the film. That was one experience. A week later, we did it in a theater in New York and had like a like 300 people, 400 people in there. And then it was, you know, this YouTube series. I think that's sort of the fun now is sort of creating different edits for different situations. Like I, I would see nothing wrong with taking a 40 minute piece and editing it into a, an Instagram sort of like story. There's so many opportunities with the platforms now to like think differently on that side. Where filmmakers sort of fail the most, they've made this great film and then they're already thinking about the next one. They've already moved on and they haven't done the marketing side of it. You want more people to know about the film so that they're curious to check it out. Where do you get your information from? Where do you sort of learn about surf films? Where do you learn about surfing? You could show them a trailer, you could show them photos, you could get the surfers to reach out to them. You need people to see it, so then that one will get you to the next one. So this is Rob. Howdy, Rob. We started filming together when we were probably 13, 14. As a filmmaker, from your perspective, like I think you really got to feed off the subject. You got to go into it, and you can't have this, this, this concept that's set in stone and that you're not going to budge on. Here it is, man. This is my dream, you know, storyboard. And like for me to be able to go like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and uh, I like that, but let's, what about, what about if we did this? Being open to collaborate, and, and the surfer, you know, you, you have a certain way that you want yourself to be seen. You want to be stoked on your part at the end of the day. You want to see every wave and be like, yep, that was a keeper, that's a clip, and you were, you were part of that process. Understanding what lens they're using, like, I know my distance, that's, like, ideal, right? I know what frame rate they're shooting at. Like, I want to understand, like, what are they trying to capture? You're both trying to accomplish something. Thank you guys. Yeah, good luck. Making a surf movie takes a long time. Get everything else out of the way. Make something cool for yourself. Find a way to make it. Start thinking of stories that really interest you and, and that you're passionate about, and then make something off that. That's, that's what I would do, and that's what I still do. My name's Taylor Steele, and this has been a surf 
filmmaking masterclass. <laughs> and then set up. <laughs> Man, out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>